Great actions, everybody. Remember to send us videos of your actions to win points for your team. Next up is our prayer time with Brenda. Hello, everyone. I'm Brenda, and in our prayer time today, we're going to pray for other people. We're going to ask God and say, please. We've already been thinking this week that sometimes we praise God, sometimes we say sorry, sometimes we say thank you. But today we're talking about praying to God using the word please and praying for other people. We're going to use our hand to do this today. So hold up your hand with me. Your thumb is the closest to your body. So we're going to remember to pray for people close to us, our family and our friends. Then your pointer finger, we pray for people who point us to Jesus. It might be Richard and James. It might be your Sunday school teachers, your leaders in BB and GB, or maybe your teachers at school if they read your Bible stories. Then the third finger, the middle one, is the tallest one. And that helps us to remember that the Bible teaches us to pray for those in leadership or pray for those in authority. So it's good for us to pray for our government in Belfast and in London, that they would make wise decisions that would help all the people. Then this next finger, sometimes called the ring finger, isn't always very strong. And that, that one helps us remember to pray for people who need God's help. Maybe someone you know who's ill or who's sad or is going through a hard time. Then the little finger, that helps us to remember to pray for ourselves. So you can pray for yourself when you get to that one, asking that God would help you to live for him each day and to love him more each day. So let's do that as we pray together. Dear God, I thank you for my friends and family. I pray that you would help them to live for you each day. We pray for Richard and James and people in our church who help us to learn more about you. And we pray today for holiday Bible club leaders 
who are also teaching us more about you. We pray today for those who are in leadership in our country and in countries all around the world that they would make wise decisions that would help all the people they care for. We pray for people who are sick today in hospital and at home and for their families as they look after them. We pray for doctors and nurses as they work hard to care for those who are sick. And Lord, we pray for ourselves. We pray for each other today that we would learn more about you at Holiday Bible Club, that we would love you more each day and live for you wherever we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What another great way to pray to God. Thank you very much, Brenda. Next up is our drama again, and we're back at Wembley Way School to see what's happening with Joe, Sam and Curly today. must go with Mr. Cross now and clean it up and do a litter pick up for the rest of the afternoon, which means not being able to play another match. So we're out of the tournament and if nobody owns up, we're going to be disqualified. Either way, whoever did it has just lost us a great opportunity to win this tournament. We were ahead. But that's not fair. It wasn't us. We want to win by being the best team, not by doing cheap tricks like that. Well, the culprit must be found or we're out of the tournament. So who did it? I'm waiting. It was me and ourselves. I'll go speak to Mr. Cross now and apologise. I'll clean it up. Curly, I don't believe it. I must admit, I'm surprised. I didn't think he did things like that. Well, at least he was honest and owned up quickly. And we're still in with the champs. <sighs> That's true. Come on, you two. You're playing again in five minutes. Let's go get the fun and get ready for the match. Oh, my racket. Curly. Joe, why did you do it? What do you mean? I saw you look at the wall and look really guilty. Why did you write on the wall? You did it. You told Mrs Ellis you did it. I told Mrs Ellis I did it so that no one would get disqualified and the tournament could go on. So what if it was? I want us to win. And it's time someone taught that Smith Street lot a lesson. I thought it might put them off. I want us to win! Well, you go do that. See ya. I'll do it. I'll win us this tournament. You'll see. Oh, you won't see. You'll be cleaning up my mess. What another great day at Wembley High School. We're nearly finished our drama. I wonder what it's going to end like tomorrow. Next is our story with Judith and she's going to talk about how God is our substitute. Hi everyone, so it's me, Judith again. You'll be sick of hearing my voice today, but I'm gonna be sharing our story with you today. And today our story is all about Jesus being our substitute. Well, the word substitute is quite a big, tricky word for some of us to understand. So we're gonna try and have a wee think about what it means. And to help us to understand it, we're gonna watch a wee challenge that we played in our family, just to give us an idea about this word. So let's have a wee watch and so see. Today we're gonna to do a challenge with our family and everyone's gonna be asked a simple question. But <laughs> if you get the question wrong, there's going to be a penalty, so beware. But the question's very easy. So, Brooke, you're up first. Here's your question. Who is your favorite holiday Bible club leader? Gemma and Brooke. Uh, what? Gemma and Brooke? Come on, they're not great. Okay, sorry, Brooke, wrong answer. That is not the best holiday Bible club leader. So, we have got our punishment. Unfortunately here, we've got a nice raw egg, which is gonna end up on this lovely hair of yours, Brooke, okay? Are you ready? No. No. Are you ready? No. no. You can't do that to Brooke. I'd take Brooke's place. Are you sure, Daddy? Okay, Are okay. Are you sure? Uh-oh, Daddy is gonna take Brooke's place. Are you ready? Uh, oh! <laughs> okay, next question. Mackenzie. Who is your favourite 
Holiday Bible Club leader? David McMullen. David McMullen? No way, I'm definitely cooler than David McMullen. Sorry, wrong answer, Mackenzie. So you get your penalty. Another egg on your head, Mackenzie. Are you ready? No! No, no. no, no you can't do that to Mackenzie. I'll take his place. Really? Again? You're going right. to take his place? Okay. Are you sure okay. about this, Daddy? Oh, no! Poor Daddy. Red. You ready? chance to get the question right. Rio, who is your favourite Holiday Bible Club leader? Michael. Michael? Oh, that's an insult. I'm definitely cooler than Michael. Sorry, Rio. Wrong answer. You have to take your punishment. Are you ready for an egg on your head? No. Ready, Rio? No. No, no. You couldn't do that to wee Rio. I'll take his place. Again, Daddy? You're going to take Rio's place as well? Yes. <gasps> Daddy's going to take Rio's place. Are you ready? Oh! <laughs> Daddy was very... Oh, dear. Alistair got a bit messy there. I still think I'm the best holiday Bible club leader, though. So you can see from that wee game that Alistair acted like a substitute. He took the place of Brooke, Mackenzie and Rio so that they didn't have to have the penalty of having the egg on their heads. So Alistair was their substitute. But what does it mean that Jesus is our substitute? Well, it's important to look at what the Bible has to say. So if we look in the book of Luke, which is in the New Testament in the Bible, in chapters 22 and 23, we can read about what happened. So Jesus had 12 disciples and one of these disciples was called Judas. But towards the end, Judas went to the chief priests and teachers of the law. And they were the really important people at that time. They made all of the rules and told everybody what they should be doing. But they were really angry with Jesus because he was really popular with the people. And he was even starting to question some of their teachings and some of their laws. So they were really angry and they had decided that they wanted to have Jesus killed. So they paid Judas some money to betray Jesus, to hand Jesus over to them. And the Bible says that Jesus was with his disciples and he was praying on the Mount of Olives. This big angry crowd approached Jesus and Judas came up to Jesus to give him a wee kiss on the cheek just to let everyone know that this was Jesus. And when all the other disciples realised what was happening, they were so angry. And one of the disciples even took out his sword and cut off the right ear of one of the chief priests. But Jesus said, no, we're not here to fight or cause a rebellion. And he reached out and he touched the chief priest's ear and he healed it. But the crowd took Jesus away and Jesus ended up in front of Herod, who was the king at that time. And Herod asked him lots and lots and lots of questions, but Jesus didn't answer. He didn't argue. He didn't try to defend himself. So Herod and his soldiers made fun of Jesus and ridiculed him. And they wrapped him up in a big, elegant robe and made fun and said, do you think you're a king? You're not a king. And then Herod sent Jesus back to Pilate, who was the governor in the country at that time. And Pilate said to the crowd, Jesus hasn't done anything wrong. He's innocent. We need to release him. But the crowd shouted, crucify him, crucify him, which means hang him on a cross. And Pilate said, no, he hasn't done anything wrong. Let me release him. And the crowd got angrier and said, crucify him, crucify him. And they even asked for Barabbas to be released. Barabbas was one of the 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 biggest crim criminals around at that time. He had done so many terrible things. So eventually Pilate gave in and he released Barabbas and he gave Jesus over to the crowd. And the crowd took Jesus up to the top of a hill with a cross and they put him on the cross and nailed him to the cross to die. And even when he was on the cross, the crowd were still shouting and making fun of him and ridiculing him. And the soldiers were shouting, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. But Jesus stayed on that cross for you and for me. And at noon, darkness came over the whole land for three whole hours. And the curtain in the temple or in the church tore completely in two. 
So everyone knew that something unusual was happening. And it was at that point that Jesus died. So it seems like a bit of a sad story today, but if you come back tomorrow and tune in tomorrow, you will learn that this is not the end of the story. Something really exciting is to happen. So make sure you come back tomorrow. But why did Jesus have to be our substitute? Well, to think about that, we're gonna do a wee experiment. So you can see we've got three jars here in front of us. One represents us, one represents sin, and one represents Jesus. And you can see that sin is in the middle, in between us and Jesus, because it's our sin that stops us from having a relationship with God. And we all have sin in our lives, whether that's that we've told a lie, whether we maybe haven't done what mum and dad have said or asked us to do, we've maybe had a bit of a cheeky attitude, or maybe in school with a friend we've been nasty or gossiping about them or making fun of them. Whatever it is, we all have sin in our hearts. And that makes our hearts a little bit messy. And that stops us from having a relationship with God. And we should be punished for the sin in our hearts. But God had a rescue plan for us. And that rescue plan was Jesus. And he sent Jesus to live on this earth. And Jesus was completely pure and completely perfect. And as you just heard in our story, Jesus was put on the cross to die. But when he was on the cross, he took the sin of the world on himself. And you can see that the sin didn't have any effect on him. He still stayed pure and he still stayed perfect. And because of that, because he died on the cross, and because he rose again, he defeated the power of sin and he is able to rescue each one of us. So for you and me, if we ask Jesus to come into our hearts, if we ask him to forgive us for all of this sin, if we say sorry for all of the wrong things that we have done and ask him to come into our lives, he can come in and make us completely clean. So just watch. So he can take all the sin away as if we never sinned. Isn't that incredible? So that's why Jesus had to die on the cross. He was a substitute for you and me. Instead of us having to be punished for our sins, he took that punishment on himself so that we could have a relationship with God. Isn't that just so incredible? What another great craft today. Thank you, Brenda. Next up is our In The Spotlight interviews and today being interviewed by David is Jamie. Jamie, it normally does a lot of work behind the scenes, so let's see what he has to say. Hi guys, and in the spotlight today we have Jamie Wright. Welcome Jamie. Good to be here. Jamie, tell us a few things about yourself. Well, as David said, I'm Jamie. Um, I work as a programmer, um, so that means I've been able to work from home the last couple of months. Um, it's been it's been strange getting used to it, but uh, yep. Um, apart from that, I uh, like uh, like playing saxophone, and of course doing doing the editing for the church. So yeah. Jimmy, I know it has been rather a different summer for us all of us. I know in previous summers you've been to various camps. So what have you been doing this summer? Um, also, what other aspects of church life were you involved in? So yeah, this summer has been quite different. Usually over the summers I would be going and doing Summer Madness, which is you know a Christian uh, camp uh, youth festival, and you know it's, it's always fun. But of course this year with COVID nineteen and all what's going on, it can't happen. So this summer it's not looking very fun for me. And uh, but I've been I've got this editing to look forward to, and of course I was going to go to KG six for maybe officer training as well, but unfortunately uh, that has been moved um, and shortened uh, so you know I'll still be going on it but I won't be going on it for a week uh, and also of course we'll be doing Holy Bible Club and that's not happening but you know um, other aspects of church life I'm involved in uh, sometimes you see me up in the corner of the church doing uh, audio visual work um, as, as I said earlier I'm doing BB officer training so I'm involved in the BB and uh, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's, I think that's the other. Uh, oh yes, and um, I'm involved in the the band and the orchestra that we have in the church here as well. Sometimes you see the band and the orchestra in front of the church. Usually whenever you know what's on and we're not, uh, we haven't got a pandemic, so, uh, yeah. I know you're, you're, you're quite busy, you're not up at the back of the church, you're in front of the church. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Jimmy, because of coronavirus, normal church services have been suspended, mm -hmm. and instead the service was out via YouTube. Tell us about your very important role in relation to this. Well, um, I'm the guy at the end of the production line, basically. I'm, I'm the one putting together, you know, cutting and editing the footage together to make sure that the, it's coherent and, you know, it all works. And I mean, you might have picked up a couple of weeks, you know, sort of messed up, especially kids' food, there was a couple of slips in there, but. Uh, for the most part, I get the job done properly, and uh, yeah, you know. Uh, and then once once I edit it, I render it out, and then I'm also responsible for making sure it goes up on YouTube, and you know, with the, it's it airs on time, and you know, and just making sure that you know the YouTube page is in in good shape. And I'm not responsible for the, the Facebook page or um, any of the other external social medias, but I I, I run the YouTube page, so. Very important. <laughs> Jamie, today we've heard about how Jesus took punishment for us. As there's no substitute for God in our lives, how has God helped you through your life and especially the last few months? Yeah, well, God has been a very important cornerstone of my life. Uh, there's been times, you know, when you think, you know, this is too difficult or I can't do this, and you just have to root yourself and your foundations, which are God. I've been a Christian since I'm a very young person. Um, I can't even remember whatever you know. I said the prayer and gave my life to Christ, but you know, it's as I say, Christ has been a very foundational part of my life, and yeah, especially during the last couple of months, it's been quite, Jesus and God have been quite important. Especially you know, whenever I'm fiddling with the computer and it just doesn't work, you just got to take a moment to breathe and realize you know you're doing this for the greater good and. It's, it's for the glory of God and, you know, you just got to focus on that rather than the, well, the issue at hand that the computer's broken and I've just, you know, it's, it's worked for an hour and it's not working. So, uh, yeah, it's, it, Jesus has been very important, you know, just making sure I don't completely lose my cool. I mean, <laughs> I haven't, I haven't <laughs> kept a level head the whole way through this, but um, I, haven't, I haven't broken anything, which is, <laughs> which is the main thing. So, yes, uh, that's, that's uh, you know, especially in the last few months, Jesus has been very important. That's here for Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. How great is it that we can find out so much information about our leaders? Next is our quiz, so I hope you're listening during the story. Which disciple betrayed Jesus to the chief priest? Question two. What did one of the disciples do with his soul? Question three.
What did Jesus do when this happened? Question four. What did Herod put on Jesus to make fun of him? Question five. Who did Pilate release instead of Jesus? Question six. What did the soldiers say to make fun of Jesus? They particularly did this when he was on the cross. Question seven. Who was on the crosses beside Jesus? Question eight. What did the what did Jesus promise the thief who asked Jesus to remember? Question nine. What happened when Jesus died? Question 10.
What does it mean when we talk about Jesus as our substitute? Remember to send us your answers when points to your team. Ready for our final song for today. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. to show Worksheets, uh, anything else you want to send us, videos of your actions, send us the email address in the description box below for the win points for your team. And tomorrow, I guess we're revealing on Facebook who the winning team was. Yeah, I guess we are. Excited. So, a big day, get the points in. Work your hardest, see you tomorrow.
去见。